we're heading down to do sunset on 80 mile beach and i'm looking in the rear vision mirror and i'm seeing this great big golden globe and it was absolutely spectacular never seen anything like it so here we are at cable beach it's such a good vibe 20 k's north of Broome is this beautiful natural tidal pool there's like so many people down here with every single floating device ever imaginable floating with the current. You just lap this up, it's so good. So we'll show you around the room. Let's go. to another episode of Art Zone Travels Off Grid Ventures. We're Pete and Tan and we invite you to come along as we continue exploring Western Australia. In this episode, we're back on the coastline, continuing our journey north, stopping to explore some breathtaking gems along the way. First, we begin in Port Headland also full of hidden gems amidst the town's industrial heart. We'll then spend time soaking in the freedom and beauty of 80 Mile Beach. From there, we head further north up to Barnhill Station, a truly unique outback meets ocean escape. We wind up in Broome, known for its rich pearling history, vibrant multicultural heritage and stunning landscapes. So join us as we journey along this stunning coastline, uncovering unforgettable spots along the way. So coming into Port Headland after staying in the outback of the Pilbara region was fantastic. We were able to um, stock up over that couple of days, get out and have a look around Port Headland. It's um, a really interesting town because Port Headland is the largest iron ore tonnage port in the world and the largest tonnage port in Australia. So the port exports in excess around 520 million tonnes of iron ore each year. We went to seek out Port Headland's hidden gems. This port town has more than meets the eye. The courthouse gallery is a must with incredible local art that captures the spirit of the Pilbara. The locals are so proud of their gorgeous local watering hole. Quite a snazzy one at that. Rays of Port Headland Waterfront Restaurant and Bar was the perfect spot to unwind with stunning views of the Indian Ocean and the ships and tugboats as they exit and enter the port on a full daily timetable. You can see the timetable, which is written up daily, at the local Visitor Information Centre. The urban landscape transforms at night, with Port Harbour lights glowing in the distance.
Port Hedland might be known for its iron ore export industry, but there's an artistic and vibrant side there that we certainly made the most of. Before leaving, we restock with groceries, fuel and water and head on out, excited to begin our road trip up north to 80 Mile Beach. So here we are at the Pardu Roadhouse. We've spent the whole day here at 80 Mile, got in last night. What a cracking campground, it's amazing. The site we're on is all grass. It was a bit unusual for us to experience that. We were going, what the? But hey, we'll take it. So what we've done today is we've spent most of our time just at the beach in front of us, just chillaxing, walking along the beach and uh, tidying up the van a bit and um, now we're heading down to do sunset so obviously you can drive down there the sunset last night was so spectacular that we're looking forward to tonight's one let's go
So as you can see, the sites here are really beautifully spaced out. Most of them do have shady trees either side. And um, so there's lots of different varieties of sites. There's something for everyone. It's been fantastic. Really impressed with 80 mile beach camping. Uh, no shortage of campsites guys either. Probably in the peak season, you'd probably have to be wary of booking. But yeah, it's been great. 80 Mile is very well renowned for good fishing. So there's a lot of people there with uh, fishing rods and carts. Um, particularly the, the species, the threadfin salmon, the whiting and the blue salmon. These are very popular as well as there's, there's sharks in the water. Um, so some of the locals even like to eat the black tip shark. So up this part of the world the tides are extreme so if you are driving onto the beach um, you have to be really mindful of uh, how big the tides are, uh, when the tides are coming in and going out. We leave the Great Northern Highway behind again and hit the dirt road. This time we're heading into Barnhill Station, a unique coastal getaway on a working cattle station that offers a unique outback meets coast experience. It's located about 130 k south of Broome. Campsites are unpowered and powered with the incredible ocean views overlook the red and dan cliffs in contrast beautifully with the white sand and the turquoise water. The beach at Barnhill is a major draw card where you can explore the rock pools and tidal lines and the small hidden coves. This is a completely different landscape. Um, I didn't expect that we'd hit these sorts of beautiful red cliffs until we got up to the Dampier Peninsula. But hey, I'll take these. These are absolutely amazing. Rich reds and lots of white sand meeting those cliffs up there. It's really striking, absolutely beautiful. And the other thing, absolutely loving this morning, is walking along the beach, doing some beach combing. And that's one of the things I love about traveling Australia is that the shells and the types of flotsam that you'll see watched up on the beach is completely different in each different state or each different region. Beautiful, really different shells here. Lots of tumbled rock that have obviously being washed down out of the cliffs. They're all smoothed off, different colors and tones and rich reds, pinks, whites, soft grays. Absolutely beautiful. And uh, we're really happy with our campsite. We're perched right on a cliff face. We've got beautiful views out over the Indian Ocean there. Really enjoying this place also just enjoying the natural landscape it's just beautiful the water is particularly warm which which favors me i love warm water but i'm not too keen on uh, things that might eat you in there so yeah but um, i found a few rock pools back there that i think would be be pretty amazing just to have a swim how old is this place it's been here for so long and it'll be here for a long, long time to come, but it's, it's just very, very beautiful.
everybody. So we've just left Barn Hill and uh, it's about 10 kilometres of dirt road. Not too bad on the way out. I think they must have um, gone over with the grader and heading into Broome. So we'll be there in about an hour and a half. For us, this is sort of a reset a couple of days. We're just going to stock up. We've got to get mail and parcels. At Barn Hill, it topped 45 degrees. And uh, so we just all laid pretty low. Everyone in the park just stayed in the deep shade all day until about five o'clock. And literally everyone made a dash down to the beach and we were all swimming in the rock pools, cooling down and just absolutely lapping it up. It was beautiful. So today it is actually about 8.30 in the morning and it's already 32 degrees. Okay, so it's mid-September and uh, we've been talking to some locals and they're saying that it's a bit out of character for up here. It's The hot's come about a month early this year. So anyways, we're just working our way through it, uh, keeping a lot of cool drinks in the fridge ice box in the freezer and uh, we've been having outdoor showers that's one thing with our zone that we love there's a little hose that you can plug in and we've just been hanging out in our togs and we'll just go and squirt ourselves down with a bit of water and cool off a bit it's a bit of a tease when you're up this end of Australia up the top so we're starting to get into crop country uh, and there's certainly a lot of sharks in these waters so nobody swims obviously up here there was some people going into their ankles just to dip their toe in and test out the temperature of the water but the water is such a beautiful blue and here you are in 45 degree heat and you can't throw yourself in there just pulled up at Roebuck Roadhouse so um, what I did just before I came in I pulled over and got the petrol spy app to see what the price of fuel is round broom and um, surprisingly this one is the cheapest. As soon as we set up camp, we decide to make a beeline down to the iconic Cable Beach to chill for the afternoon and enjoy the sights. Broom today it is 38 degrees anyway what we decided we'd do today is we just jumped in the car and we're just going to see where it takes us no plan for today uh, we're just going to drive around and just start having a look at some of the features of Broom Let's see where today takes us okay so it looks like we're heading out to Guntham Point first and we're pulling up here just to go and have a look at a beach called Riddell Beach. Check this town, it's amazing.
Alrighty, we are thinking now it's time for a nice cool ale because it is a warm 39 degrees outside now and it's lunchtime. So we thought we'd go to an iconic spot in Broome called Mezzo's. So it's a brewery and uh, I can't wait to try their ginger beer. One of my weak spots. Let's go and get some deep shade tart and that beer for them too. So they've got a mango beer and they've got a chilli beer. So I'm not sure which one I'm going to like the best, but I'll let you know. Okay, so this is what I promised you, the mango. So let's see what I think of it. God, I like it. I love it. Do you love it? Beer, mango. And can I be honest with you? I asked her to put a ginger beer in it as well, so it's got a combo. Cheers guys. Let's go the ginger beer. Oh yeah. Yep. 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 That hits the spot. Happy days? Very nice. Today we're heading to Broome's Historical Museum. We've heard it's an absolute little pearler, excuse the pun. But anyway, listen, so we're gonna go and check it out. Come along with us. It's got some fantastic displays on Broome's rich history, including the pearling industry and also indigenous histories. I'm interested in the World War II history when um, Broome was bombed in World War II by the Japanese, so there's going to be some interesting articles in there about it. Good morning everyone. Well we're going dinosaur footprint hunting this morning but we just jumped out of our van and we have just seen the sunrise coming up behind the jetty. It's bright red. Anyway as I was saying and good morning. Good morning. <laughs> we're going on a dinosaur foot hunt. I mean it's the only time on all our travels of Australia that we're getting up early to go and do that. Why are we getting up early? Well, Pete's researched the tides. Yes, so um, you have to be at a tide lower than 1.4 because the bottom set of prints are just sitting above the low tide mark at that point. So. The area around Broome is one of the richest sites of dinosaur footprints in the world. But to Aboriginal people, the prints are not those of dinosaurs, but of great cultural significance. The evidence of dinosaurs can be seen today in footprints scattered over more than 200 kilometres of coastline from Broome right up to Cape Levesque. 
However, many of the prints, including those here at Minyere, Gunthian Point, can only be seen at very low tide. Up there behind me in that tower, there's two giant eagles sitting in a beautiful big nest. And it sounds like they're waking up to the sun rising. A pretty good spot to make their nest, I must say. It is a bit tricky to find these things. We're having a bit of trouble. Pete's gone down on the lower part of the beach there. And I'm just coming across the top and looking down to see if I can find any of these dinosaur footprints. Bit of a mystery. Walking through these amazing rock formations is a bit like walking through a moonscape of some sorts. Look at this. Okay, so I've managed to clamber down from these rocks here and I've come down onto the flat rock surface where there was indications of where they might be. Not sure, I'm seeing all sorts of shapes, but anyway, I'm going to film them and hey, let's take a guess if they're footprints or not. goose chase I've ever been on. I've got coordinates, GPS coordinates, I've got photographs, I've got maps and I still haven't found these <laughs> dinosaur prints so I've got one last chance before the tide comes in and I'm really really not sure because it doesn't look like the terrain of the photos but that's the GPS coordinates. It's about a kilometre up this muddy rocky track or mud flats. So I'll see how I go, and I'll let you know. I've tried, GPS coordinates aren't leading it to anywhere. Uh, right there. We're miles away from the point out there. So it's uh, starting to rain. There's an awful lot of rocks to walk through. So um, yeah, I'll, um, I'll call it quits, which I hate doing next time.
everyone. Well, this afternoon we're heading up north. 20 k's north of Broome is this beautiful natural tidal pool called Coconut Wells. So we're going to make a beeline for there this afternoon. It is 38 degrees currently. It's around midday. We wouldn't normally go out in the heat in the middle of the day, but there's something else that uh, we need to take into account. We've packed a picnic lunch and uh, a few cold drinks, so we're going to have a picnic there afterwards. And we're going to float down the creek towards the sea, and it's really going to be some fun. I can't wait. So we're looking forward to it. See you up there. like so many people down here with every single floating device ever imaginable and they're all floating up with the current chillaxing so laid back it's not funny and cooling off in this 40 degree heat it's the place to be so just on the other side of this lagoon is sand dunes and then there's the sea so let's go let's have a look at it
So glad we came here. It's uh, absolutely beautiful. The temperature of the water is so warm, yet there's a slight wind blowing across, so you can still get that sort of refreshing feel. It's amazing how you can just walk over the dunes there out to that beautiful open ocean. Ah, it's just glorious. There's no one on that beach. It's amazing. But wow, what a great spot to bring your kitties. It's not too deep. There's no strong ripping current. It is such a peaceful, relaxing place. So if you're gonna come up here, guys, plan at least a couple of hours. Bring some sun chairs. There's a few Cassiarina trees back at the car park you can tuck up under. Or bring an umbrella and a picnic, a few cold drinks, and just lap this up. It's so good. Look at the cars here, it's like an hour and a half before sunset and it looks like it's uh, Torrey Pines in California when we went down the beach in those days with our cars. So here we are at the famous Cable Beach in Broome. It's a beautiful afternoon. It's uh, about five o'clock and the sun will set in about 20 minutes time. I'm looking up the beach there and I can see the camels slowly starting to come up this way. So when they get here, I'll go down and get some shots for you. I think I'd rather be looking at them than on them because they're just such an amazing sort of visual experience. This is actually a really long beach and a really deep beach, like it'd have to be oh, probably a couple of hundred metres out to the water from the back of the dunes here. And there are hundreds, hundreds of four-wheel drives down here. I don't think I've ever seen so many four-wheel drives, actually, all on one beach. It's incredible. Everyone's out with their sun chairs, they're having drinks, having barbecues, walking their dogs. It's such a good vibe. We're loving it.
for your company. As we wrap up this episode, we are beyond excited to invite you to join us next time where we'll be exploring the stunning Dampier Peninsula with its striking free camps on coastal cliffs at Kwandong Point, iron rich red sands of James Price Point, and we camp with the custodians at the beautiful campground of the Lombardina community. This journey promises immersive experiences and incredible free camping in unique landscapes. If you're enjoying our content and not already subscribed, please consider subscribing. It's easy and completely free. If you're watching this on TV, you can scan the QR code shown here now with your phone. It will take you straight to the subscribe button. Your likes and comments really matter to us. They really help our channel grow and support our content, allowing us to continue sharing our adventures. Thanks for watching and be sure to join us next time as we dive even deeper into this extraordinary part of Western Australia. See you on the next adventure.